Hi folks, out on the Triumph for claim again. I want to get this rear drum off and have a look at the brakes because I want to clean all this lot up, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, I want to tidy this lot up now, starting from one wheel at a time. I'm starting at the back because I've got the back here. And uh, I'm going to get this drum off, and that means we've got to take off this hub nut underneath this little cap here. So let's see if we can get this off first, because the bearing actually is included apparently in the drum. So let's have a look, take this cap off. All right, okay, let's try and get this little cap off. Now I've not had nothing to do with this car, so I've not done any maintenance or whatever on it ever. So this is all new. Right, okay. It has been packed with grease, but as you can see, it's very old grease. Right, we have got a split pin in there, which has obviously been out before because it's broken on one side. So let's just withdraw that. I'll stick that in there for the moment. I should have my gloves on. I've got a pair of gloves over there, but uh, you know me. Right, the little cap comes off, and there's our bearing nut, and it's not tight, it's loose. So that is apparently how you adjust the bearings. You normally nip this up to a certain uh, torque till you take the play out of the bearing. So that's what you normally do there. I was expecting that to be a bit tighter than that. It's probably a tapered bearing, this in here. So let's just wind this off. Remind me to put my gloves on in a minute, will you? I've given it a good wire brush down, so I mean, there's not too much rubbish under here, but as you know, a lot in there was all uh, covered in oil. Right, that's the nut off. Now, I think I've got to take the lug nuts off because I think these are maybe on the back. Oh no, they do come off with the um, hub by the looks of it. I'll take them off anyway. Right, now hopefully this should draw off. Now as you can see, the bearing's nice and loose. So I want to take that off carefully. So there's our tapered seat bearing there, as you can probably see. And that wants to remain clean because we adjust it by the tightness of that nut, as I said to you. So uh, that's how simply they're adjusted. And now hopefully, just by withdrawing this, should be able to take the hub off. Sometimes the pads can get caught on the edge of the uh, drum and that can cause them to stay on. Just gently ease it past the edge of the drum, probably. There they come. Now you want to be careful here. I have got a face mask because brake pads before a certain year have asbestos in them. And there you go. In actual fact, I'm very surprised. It looks like it's had uh, new cylinders in. That's the inner race in there. Let's put that down. So those to me look like pretty new wheel cylinders. The brake shoes as well appear to be pretty good and not worn at all. So I would imagine that um, this had probably been well maintained. So all it basically needs that is a, a clean in there. So um, I'll get all this cleaned up and uh, get it all brushed out. As I say, I've got a face mask and gloves. I've got my gloves on now, as you can see. There's my face mask. So before I start disturbing anything there, I'll uh, put them on and give this a good clean out and then I'll come back to you. Right, okay, there we go. I've given that a good clean up. It didn't need much cleaning actually, but uh, as you can see, it's in very, very good condition. And also the uh, linkage there, as you can probably see, and the, um, the actual pipe as well seems to be in good order. It's got a sleeving on it, so uh, that's good. I did give that a coat of uh, black sort of underseal stuff just to tidy it up under the wheel arch, but uh, as I say, I'm just trying to make this look a bit better for the, obviously, the new buyer. And this is our hub. As you can see, the bearings and the races are still in there. So I've got to give this a good clean up now. And you've got this clutch and brake spray here. This does a good job of... Uh, breaking down all the grease and grime and all that. So I'll just give this a good clean out now. And as you can see, I've got my gloves on. And I've also got my mask on as well. So I'm gonna carry on, just give this a clean out. And I'll see you in a minute.
Right, okay. Here we are. So let's show you where we we're at. I've put it all back together now. I don't know what I've still got that on for. Put it all back together. And don't forget, I'm, I'm not going to spend money unnecessarily. So all I'm basically doing is taking this off. If these were in need of extra work, I would have obviously bought new pads, bought new cylinder or whatever, and done all that sort of stuff. All I've had to do basically is just to clean it up. So let's show you where we are at the moment. So that's the nut back on there. Now you, you may have noticed that I said that was hand tight. Well, it is supposed to be hand tight. That's how you adjust it. You don't put a big force on that. And then what you do then, once you've got it to that stage, you get your little cap, you plonk your little cap on. And what you're looking at is basically lining the cap so that you can get a pin through it because that locks it on. So all I'm going to just slightly do, just going to give it a little, little tweak like that. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. And that drum is rota rotating. There's no play in the bear in there. And then you want to be able to just slide this on so and get a pin back in it. So there we go. And before we can get one in, in actual fact, that was very similar. I went out and just got one the same size. That to me is too slack because you could actually, that nut can open and shut as you can see, and that could loosen the bearing off. You want a really tight fitting pin. So I'm going to go out and get another pin. That's, I just got these because it was the same size as the one that was in there. Right, I've gone and got the box, I'm not messing about. Right, let's have a look what we've got here. Um, that's, a, that's a bigger one there, that looks like probably the one. Let's try that in the hole. Could probably go one size bigger. I'll keep that one out just for the moment. Let's have a look at this one. This is a bloody, this is a big one. Ah, oh, that's the one. Now, as you can see, by putting that one in, that nut can't turn now, you see. So by having the right size pin in, putting that down to there, as you can see, look, that nut now cannot move. So that little thin one, what I had in there before, that would have allowed the nut to loosen off enough for that bearing to play. So that's what I've done there. And I'm just gonna open that up, just to wrap it round. I'm gonna cut a bit of that off as well. I don't need it that length. There we go. That can go up there like that. And that one at the bottom, I will chop that off a bit as well. It doesn't need to be that long. There we go. And that one can push under there like that. Now, as you can see, that's fine now. That bearing's locked on. It's not tight at all on the drum. And there's no way that nut can spin a little bit to loosen off. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. All we've got to do now is do what the book says. And that just says, just put half fill this cap with oil. I don't know why personally, but... Uh, I think it's just in case you run out or you get a dry bearing and you've got some in here. Because there's no way that can get inside the actual uh, bearing from there. So we'll do that. And guess what? I left my hammer outside. And there we go. So that's the back wheel done. The bearing's adjusted and the brakes are fine. Right, so there you go. That's the uh, linkage and all that, as you can probably see. Now, I'm not going to adjust the handbrake up or anything because that's obviously a job for when the wheels are all back on and... Uh, things are moving so i'm going to leave it as it is at the moment there was no reason to think that that wouldn't be okay the hand brake's not stuck on at all so i'm going to put this wheel back on now and i'll probably start the front one next so that i can get this side of the car done spin the car around and then do the other side Right, okay then, that was a quick little video. There's no play in that at all, so I'm happy with that. Both sides, absolutely fine. So uh, I'm gonna start that one on another day, but uh, that concludes this video on this little Triumph for Claim rear wheel setup. Old cars are very easy to work on, as you've probably seen. And uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget, check out my other videos and also my other channels as well, Retro Haps and also Butler's Empire, where you see some more behind the uh, scenes sort of stuff. There's the link down there if you want to hit the subscribe button and ring that little grey notification bell. Just click on that and it will say set your preferences to all. And if you click that, and that means you get notified every time I upload a video. Anyway, thanks very much. See you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.